if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. So understand, the Bible is, it ain't no dating in the Bible. It's either you're going to marry somebody or you're not. The Bible says if you want to get a friend, you should prove them first. Do you understand what he's saying? According to the scriptures. So for example, you've been taught what? Have you been taught the correct way? Have you been taught wrong? You've been taught the wrong way. So God esteems what? Marriage. And does he support boyfriend and girlfriend? Let me ask you a question. What do you think God calls boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible? What do you think he calls that? Huh? Yeah, what do you think God calls boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible? Give me Leviticus 19 and 29. I'm going to show you what God calls it in the Bible. Because us, we think that's cool. Who went to prom in high school? You went to prom? I did. I went to prom. Should we have done that? Should our parents have let us go to prom? Think about it. What happens prom night? Y'all know what happens. Quick. Huh? She say bad life. She said she rolled her eyes, looked this way. Are you at home? Stop playing. What happens prom night, my brother? Huh? Huh? What happens on prom night? You don't want to talk about your prom night. Watch this. Watch this. Right. 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 Which leads to what? 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter. So check it out. This is to the parents. Now the Bible says... Do not prostitute thy daughter. Is this talking about, hey, little girl, I want you to work this corner for me. Come back home at 8 p.m. Is that what it's talking about? Who can tell me what it's talking about? Yeah, what else? What is that really saying right there? Do not prostitute thy daughter. Huh? No. Anybody want to give it a try? Watch this. Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Now check it. Check this out. Check this out. If you send your daughter to the prom and let her go out with a teenage boy and get a hotel room, God is telling you that you're prostituting your daughter, right. causing her to be a whore. Right. Cause you and me both know exactly what's gonna go down after prom. Right. They may not even make it to the hotel. Right, right. Bring it out. <laughs> Am I lying? Now go back to Hebrews 13 and 4. Go back to Hebrews 13 and 4. Watch this. We got to come back to what God is telling us to do. Yes, right. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. You see that? Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled meaning what when you get married you can do whatever you want to do right. according to the commandments do whatever you want to do with your spouse with your wife or with your husband but does god honor the boyfriend and girlfriend type thing what did he call it he called it prostitution right this is this is what else he calls it read but whoremongers and adulterers god will judge whoremongers those prostitutes boyfriend and girlfriends. God said he's going to judge those people. So let me ask you a question. So who here has had a boyfriend or girlfriend before? You, ain't, you never had a girlfriend? You never had a boyfriend? All right. Now check it out. I had a girlfriend, all right, back before I came into the knowledge. Now, once I learned better, what do you think I did? Huh? I did better. Now I have a what? Wife. Right. One wife. The only one. You understand? What? Not multiple. It also said God will judge whoremongers and adulterers. So if you are married, what is God telling you that you cannot do? Nope. Speak up. You cannot cheat on your spouse. Right. Is that going on in the black and Hispanic community? Why is that? We don't respect each other. Ultimately, we don't respect God. Because when we cheat on one another, when we disrespect, for example, give me Romans 13 and 8. Nope. I'm going to show you something real quick. How you doing, my brother? What are we teaching? We're teaching our true nationality according to the scriptures and what we have to do to inherit eternal life. Yes. Sis, let me ask you a question. How do you get the kingdom of heaven? Bring it out. How do you get the kingdom of heaven? You say do the right thing. Tell me what the right thing is. Is it a Spike Lee movie?
tell me what the right thing is. The reason I say that because I ask this question all the time. You say repent. What you say? What is the right thing, my brother? You say staying out the way. Huh? You say repent. Okay, do what God tells us to do. Give me uh, Matthew 19 and 16. Watch this. Everybody, watch this. This is as simple as it is. But what you'll realize is that majority of our people are not doing this. This is out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. Come on. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Yep. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. So this brother came unto Jesus Christ. He said, Good master, read. What good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. He says, so what good thing do I have to do so I can live forever? Eternal life, eternal means forever. And this is referring to what? The kingdom of heaven. Read on. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? So Jesus Christ, get this picture out of your mind. Jesus Christ ain't no white boy stringy hair. Right. Jesus Christ was a black man right. with woolly hair, yes, like right. you, you and me, right. and you. Read on. But he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. So he's saying there's only one good, and that's the Father. Yeah. Read on. That is God. Come on. But if thou wilt enter into life. So if you want to make it to the kingdom of heaven, all of you, if you would like to make it to the kingdom of heaven, read. Keep the commandment. Do what? Keep the commandment. Can you make the kingdom of heaven having a boyfriend or a girlfriend? You gotta have a wife or a husband. Do y'all know why? Think about it, think about it. In order to have a nation, meaning that's a kindred or a specific race of people. Give me uh, Sirach 26 and 19, race be magnified. If you want a powerful nation, right? Can you do it by promiscuity? Can you do it by uh, baby mama, single parent household, that destroys a nation. Right. That does not build a nation. That's why God tells us to have one wife. Right. That's why God tells the woman to have one husband. So why? So we can build a nation instead of destroying each other. Right. Now think about it. Have we been building as a people? No. Why? Because we learned this. Right. We learned the Bible according to our oppressors which do not have our best benefit at hand. They want to do what? They want to destroy us worse and worse and worse and worse. But we're here to tell you today that you are the Israelites according to the Bible and that your Messiah, Jesus Christ, is a black man that looks like you and he wants what's best for you. So that's why we're going to teach you the save the Lord. You got it? Come on. Sirach chapter 26, verse 19. My son, Keep the flower of thine age sound. The, the advice is coming from the scripture. Keep the flower of thine age sound. Watch this. And give not thy strength to strangers. Don't give your strength, meaning what? Your seed. Right. Your sperm. Men, don't be sticking your thing in any and every woman. Right. God says don't do that. Sometimes you might get bit. Right. You understand? You might, you might start dying slow if you do that. Read on. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession, when you find a righteous sister that is of your own people, God is also telling you what? Do not marry outside of your race. That's right. You, you, never, you ever heard that before? God is telling our people not to marry outside of your race. Think about it, a nation. A lot of people like to say you're an American. You're not an American. Your forefathers were brought here in 1619 as slaves. That's right. Where's the black man's military? Right. He doesn't have one right. because he's an American. You assimilated to a culture, to a people who don't like you. Right. Y'all understand that, right? Read the verse again. Come on. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, Sow it with thine own seed. With your own people. Read. Trusting in the goodness of thy stock. You know what the goodness of our stock is? You ever heard of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, King David, King Solomon, Jesus the Christ? Meaning what? You got to have some pride and dignity about yourself knowing that you come from the greatest people that ever walked the face of the earth. That's what that's talking about. Watch this. Come on. 
So thy ways. So thy what? So thy way. It says, so it with your righteous Israelite wife. So thy what? So thy race. R-A-C-E. Race is in the Bible. Right, right. Read. Which thou leavest shall be magnified. It's about building strong nations. That's right. You understand? So, boyfriend and girlfriend, that stuff is out of the question, right? So now what do we got to do? What we got to do now? Hold on, I can't have a pool thing. I can't have a side chick. You understand? When I get lonely at night, I can't text my... No, you can't. Right. You cannot do that. So what do you got to do now? Huh? You get married. That's Give me Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Now, sis, getting married the way you are right now, no. You know what's got to happen first? You got to change. What? You got to change, my sister. Because if you get married now, this guy, this guy right here, did you get a flyer? Did you learn something today? You got to go? Now, watch this. Listen to this before you go. What I call? Listen, listen up. Watch this. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Come on. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. So you got to get yourself together. How do you get yourself together? According to God's commandments. Sis, can you wear that according to the Bible? No. What you supposed to be wearing, sis? A modest dress. Not no dress that stopped right here. Right. Or stop right there. No, you got a, a nice flowing dress. Not a skin tight dress. You understand? You, my man, what you got to have on your shirt in order to get yourself together? How you got to start dressing? Do you know? That's why I don't be so quick to walk away. Yeah. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. What we're feeding you is life. Before you was dead without a chance in hell, without a hope. Now, by us reading the scriptures, this is going to give you a chance to live. Right. And not just in this life, but forever. Yes, read what you got. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Come on. You stay right there too, my brother. I see what you're doing right there. You stay and listen to this. Watch this. Speak unto the children of Israel. To who? Unto the children of Israel. Who, who am I speaking to? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Yeah, We're not speaking to everybody. Neither was God. <laughs> you understand that, right? God just said he was only speaking to the children of Israel. Right. You should feel some type of... Hey, wait a second. This whole time, I thought God loved everybody. But God only loves me. That's right. You should be like, you know what? I think I want to listen to what God got to say. Because before, I didn't understand who he was talking to. Right. I didn't understand what he was talking about. But now you know. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel. Read on. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. That's a commandment. Look around. You got fringes. Fringes, fringes, fringes. Guess what? You have to wear these every day. That's right. Every day. Why? Because it rem it reminds you of the commandments of God. That's right. You understand? When you don't have it, you feel like you can do any and everything. Like nobody's shaking. No, no, no. God still see you. You understand? But check this out. If you say you profess godliness, which is being an Israelite, we're the only ones that could do that. Right. How is somebody going to be able to see you do that if you never apply the commandment to show it openly? Right. You, know? right. you understand? You got to spring forth your good works. You got to show. Meaning what? Hey, bro, what's that on your shirt? Hey, let me show you. Then guess what? Now you're teaching him the Bible. And now you're bringing somebody else to Christ. Not this guy. Not this devil right here. But the true Messiah. That's right. You understand? That's called nation building. That's called love thy brother as thyself. Right. When you start keeping God's commandments, guess what? People will be able to see a change in you. Right. And you're going to do what? You're going to stir them up to do what? I can do that too. When you, if y'all visit the school, when y'all meet our sisters, you're going to see them with head wraps, with modest clothing and dresses, and they look nice. Right. It ain't no Harriet Tudman fashion show. You understand? Right. That's what a lot of sisters always think. They always think that, oh, man, I got to dress like an old. No, that ain't the case. These sisters know how to dress. Right. Why? Because they've been doing it for some time. And guess what they could do? Give me Titus chapter 2, verse 3. They could teach y'all. <laughs> and believe it or not, you got other sisters sitting there waiting for you, but you ain't you ain't changed your mind yet. You still want to be, I ain't going to say that. I think y'all sisters want to do the right thing. I ain't going to say that. Because y'all wouldn't be standing here if y'all, you know, I, I wouldn't put that on you. Lord's will. Watch this. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. The aged women likewise, 
that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. So the older sisters who've been in this truth longer than you, they are going to be what? They already going to be showing you the right way to do it. They got experience with it. Read. Not false accusers, not given to much wine. And hey, when it comes to our sisters, that's, they like to get high. They like to get drunk. They like to gossip. False accusers. Oh, he's sleeping with so-and-so. That's what our sisters like to do. Read. Teachers of good things. These women are going to teach you good things. Teach you how to love your husband, how to love your kids, not to gossip, how to control your liquor. You understand? Read. That they may teach the young women. That they may teach the young women like yourselves. Read. To be sober. To love their husbands. To love their children. Read. To be discreet. To be discreet. Meaning what? Don't be showing everything. Everybody not supposed to say that. See that? Sis, I hope you learned something today. Did you get a flyer? Yeah. Okay, make sure you read that thing. Read on. To be discreet. Chase. Keep us at home. Because our sisters like to run the streets. That's right. God says a righteous sister is supposed to be a keeper at home. So let me ask my man right here. Let me ask you, what is your nationality? Fam, you. What's your nationality, my brother? You say black. So let me ask you, nation, who been, you, you go to fam? Who else went to school here? Does anybody know what the root word of nationality is? See, nope. Root word of nationality. What is the root word of nationality? Nation. Nation ties you to a what? A place? Like a street? <laughs> what type of place? A home. Like, my home is on the south side. Like, that's my nationality? Okay, a lot of our people live in the hoods and the ghettos. So, my nationality is ghetto number one. That's my nationality. No. That's why I'm asking these questions. So you can think about it. A nation with Is America a nation? Is America a nation? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. America's a nation. Yeah, but America, United States of America, that's a nation. You ever heard of something that's nationwide? Yeah, that's all in America. Right. So they have a nationwide event. All 50 states in America are involved. So a nation ties you to a what? A country. What's your nationality? You say African American. Is Africa a country or a continent? Continent. Let me, so I ask again, what's your nationality? Hey, you look like, you look like a brother of mine. Don't you look like Captain Zakar? We do, we do. That means, hey, you all right. That means you're going to learn something today, man. Captain Zakar is very intelligent. All right? Um, what's your nationality? You say African-American again for the second time. What do you say, my brother? You got to take a shot. Huh? You say American. Okay. All right, so let me ask you, when did you and me, when did our forefathers get here? You know, depends on history. Depends on history. That's, so, okay, let me see what else you know. Okay, so the Declaration of Independence, who was that written for? 17, what, 76, right? Who was that written for? Was it written for the white people or was it written for the black people? Why you say it was written for the white people? It had nothing to do with us because guess what? When America became a nation, when they defeated the British, we were still slaves. That's right. You do understand that, right? So to call yourself a free American, no, you're still a slave. You just got more liberties. Which is actually worse because it's mental slavery now. Now you think you're equal when they're still laughing at you behind closed doors. So, let me ask you again. What, why is it so hard? Why is it such a hard question? It's because God did this to us. That's why. What's your nationality? Because you know it ain't American. You know that. Can I call you Zakar for now? Zakar. What is our nationality? What's our nationality, man? Take a wild guess. Who wants to be honest? Africa's a continent. 
All right, so bet, let's do it Africa. What country in Africa do we come from? It's a lot. So which one? Israel. Israel. There you go. Very good. According to the Bible, we come from Israel. That's what God calls us. Now, you said according to what we're talking about. Am I making that up or is it in the Bible? It's in the Bible. Transatlantic slave trade. You've ever heard of that before? Can you read about that in the Bible? Read it for her. We're going to find out right now. Listen up. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Remember, Egypt and Israel, before the Suez Canal was created in the 1800s, that was one landmass. You could walk from Egypt to Israel. All right? So would you need a ship to go from Israel to Egypt? No, because it's land. Right. So, read it again. Watch this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So what is he talking about? Who wants to take a wild guess on what Moses is saying right here? Is the car? What's he talking about? Huh? Come, come close. I mean, he do it's hard, right? So he can't be talking about physical Egypt. What is he talking about? You say mental or spiritual. What you say? So she says, returning to us knowing who we are. So what I'll do, I'll tie in these two together. Give me verse 46. All right, so Egypt, it means something. What were the Israelites when they was in Egypt? Slaves. So when he said that you're going to return to Egypt, but not the actual Egypt, what is he saying? You're going to return where? Back to slavery. But not in actual Egypt that's next to Israel, but where? Here. Here. Very good. 46, read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So the curses that we just read, they're going to be upon us for a sign. Hey, that sign right there behind us. What does that sign tell us? What, what store is that? Tires Plus. Yeah, it tells us that that store is Tires Plus. So when we read in the Bible, that we would go back into slavery on ships. What's that telling us? It's a sign, right? It's telling us what? Huh? No. No time travel. No time travel. Watch this. Yeah, which is telling us, who did this happen to? Who did that happen to right there? What nationality was Moses? Huh? Israel, exactly. Israelite. So when God, through Moses, is prophesying right here, telling us that we would go back into spiritual Egypt, which is slavery, he's telling that the people who went into slavery on cargo slave ships during the transatlantic slave trade are who? Which people is that? Who is that? Israelites. Right. Didn't that happen to us? Didn't we go into cargo slave ships in 1600s? Didn't it happen to you and me? So that means we're the Israelites. That's, right. That's what it means. It's a sign. Nobody else can identify with that except us. So God is telling us in these last days, Revelations 11 and 8, God is telling us in these last days that, hey, listen up. You are actually my chosen people. Now check this out. Why did the Israelites go into slavery? Why'd they go? Why are we here right now? Because we did what? We sinned. What does sin mean? going against the commandments so check it out aren't we still doing that so how do we get out of captivity start obeying the commandments of God very good are y'all ready to do that 
Or are y'all still gonna be hard-headed and rebellious and get jacked up some more? You play football? You used to play football. Now I'm gonna just tell you, man, I, I graduated from FAM, uh, fall 2014 SBI, right? So things were a little bit different then. Things in the world were still bad, but they're at an all-time high right now. I, I think that you should probably pay attention to what's going on in the earth right now. Your future, your bright future that you just have in your head, the American dream, I'm gonna graduate, I'm gonna get a great job and I'm gonna be successful. Uh, I don't know if y'all see what's going on in the world. That's, it's not gonna play out like you think it's gonna play out. You do understand this place is going to be destroyed, right? A lot of brothers hear that as like, yeah, I kind of know, but I don't want to accept that. Now, here's the thing. It's either you accept it and repent and keep God's commandment at the forefront. And I'm not telling you to be a bum because I'm not a bum. You understand? I graduated. I got a decent paying job. You understand? I'm not going to advise you to be a bum. But what I am going to advise you to do, don't get caught up in this uh, false society. You thinking that the world's a certain way when God's telling you it's the other way. Right now, you should be preparing your spirit for what's to come. So you the famine have... that's going to come. You understand? Uh, the lockdown that's going to come again. The more, uh, what, what is it called? Uh, the new variant, the Delta variant that's going to come. You understand? What, that other thing that popped off with COVID, that was a test run. God is trying to get us ready. But guess what? If you want to continue to follow after the same people who put you in slavery, you know? hey, by all, by all means, be my guest. Go ahead and do it. But I'm letting you know that is leading you to death. Right. You're not going to be delivered following this guy. Right. You know, right. You're not. It's not going to happen because deliverance is only for the Israelites. Yes, right. Did y'all know that? Did you know that? Because I thought you, you was thinking in your head, everybody's going to be delivered. That's what I thought. You thought salvation is for everybody, didn't you? You thought that too. Tell the truth, you used to think that too. What about that? You ever heard of that before? No? All right. So how do you get delivered? How do you get saved? How? Huh? Uh, Matthew 3 and 6, and she said it. I'll show you. Watch this. But this is the true baptism. It ain't talking about the water. It's not talking about the water. It's talking about repentance. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 6. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. That's what we got to do. Supplication. We got to confess our sins openly and repent from them. Right. If we want God to deliver us, if we want God to save us, we have to repent and sin no more. Right. John 5 and 14. We have to repent and sin no more. Y'all understand that? Okay, watch this. The book of John chapter 5 verse 14. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. We can't sin no more. Once God reveals to us who we are and what we got to do, we cannot turn our back on God. Right. Otherwise, we're setting ourselves up for some serious judgment. Right. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the Lord. So you learned today that you got to wear what? Why? She says she got to wear modest dresses. Because you do not want to fall into the hands of the Lord. Since what you learned today about your hair? Go natural. Because that's not your true hair color. You understand? These are things that we got to start doing. Fringes in the border of blue. Who, here, who, who likes to eat shrimp and crab? Tell the truth. Tell it. They like to eat shrimp and crab, so I got a scripture for y'all. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. When I say everything you learned was wrong, I ain't playing with you. Right. Everything you learned was wrong. Right. It's our job to guide you in the right way. Meaning what? It's dangerous out here without guidance. Right. What guides our lives? What guides, or what should be the guide? Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 76. What should guide our lives? Huh? The Bible, the word of God. And guess what? God would only guide you if you seek him. You understand? Read it. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 76. And the God of them who keep my commandment. God is only going to guide you if you keep his commandments. That's right. You got to know that thing, Proverbs 8 and 17. Bring it you got to be hungry. You got to thirst after righteousness. He's not just going to give it to you. Think about it. 
Why would he just give it to us if we already sinned before? There's a reason he brought us here. For example, why do people go to prison? Why? Because they did something good? No! <laughs> they go to prison, why? They did something bad, and they're supposed to do what? Learn from it. Right. Learn from it. So how is God going to see you learning if you're still breaking his commandments? Yeah. You got to start doing what? Keeping his commandments, and then he'll begin to guide your life. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. I love them that love me. God only loves the Israelites who love him. Right. How do you show God that you love him? By doing what? Huh? Keeping his commandments. That's the only way to show God that you love him. Read it again. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Right now is the time. Right now is the time. You think they're not going to shut us down eventually? Or try to? For coming out here teaching that Christ is black? The Israel is black? The white man's the devil? Come on now. While you got some time left, you need to be taking this thing serious. I know you heard it before. Because what you said, stop playing. Time's running out. Why you got some time, you understand? Right. Now, as a motivation, how God sees it, verse 36, come on. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36. Three. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Because remember, you ain't doing it to God. Fall short, whatever. We messing things up for us. Right. We're destroying our own lives. Right. We're destroying our own chance at salvation. Read it again. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. And there it is. There it is. This whole life, all of us, we all thought that we love God. That's what we, we really thought that. But God's telling us when we break his commandments, we hate him. Right. But this man told you, come as you are. God loves everybody. All is going to be. No, 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 no. He's only going to forgive your sins. If you serious, right. if you say, oh, I'm sorry, God, for this, and you keep doing it, hey, there's no forgiveness of sins right there. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.